Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at algebraic proof. So in exams you'll be asked to prove that things are even, odd, um, or multiples of a number. You should do this by expressing the thing algebraically and then rearranging and simplifying to make it look like it is even, odd, or multiple. For example, even numbers are 2 times something. So it'd be 2 times a, 2 times b, 2 times x plus 5, it's 2 times anything. Similarly, odd numbers are 2 times something plus an odd number. So an even number plus an odd number. A multiple of something would be uh, that number times something. For example, a multiple of 7 could be 7a, or it could be 7x squared, x to the power 5, it could be anything. Uh, and all of these, you know, will be a multiple of 7. Okay? You should make a note of that before we continue, so you remember the, it for the rest of the video. Let's start off with the first example. Prove that the sum of three consecutive positive numbers is always a multiple of three. Okay, so three consecutive positive numbers will look like these examples. 1 plus 2 plus 3, 11 plus 12 plus 13. Consecutive just means next to each other. So all these sets of three numbers are all numbers next to each other on the number line. And when you add those together, uh, you get these numbers, and you can check that those are all multiples of 3, which they are. Now let's prove it. And watch how I prove it. So n, n plus 1, and n plus uh, 2 are how we write consecutive positive numbers uh, using algebra. These numbers are next to each other, because they are only one apart. And it says the sum of them, so we need to add them all together. So, we add them all together because it says sum. Sum means add. Now, n plus n plus n plus 1 plus 2 is the same as 3n plus 3. We just simplify that. And if we factorise that, it looks like a multiple of 3. So, it's 3 times a number. Therefore, it must be a multiple of 3 as required. And that is a full proof that this is correct. Example 2. Prove that when any odd integer is squared, the result is always 1 more than the multiple of 8. Okay, so we need an odd number. An odd integer, an odd number. Integer just means number. So we get 2n plus 1, that's what an odd number looks like. And we're going to square it. Square it like this. 2n plus 1 squared, and we can expand that bracket. 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. When you expand that using uh, just expanding, you get 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Now, this definitely looks like one more. So we've got a one more, but is that one more than the multiple of 8? Because that's what we want to show, one more than the multiple of 8. We definitely have a plus 1 that shows the one more, but is this a multiple of 8? Well, let's see if it does work. So 4n squared plus 4n is the same as 4 times n squared plus n. Which is the same as n times n plus 1. Again, just factorising. n times n plus 1. Well, if n is even, then n plus 1 is odd. If n is odd, then n plus 1 is even. Whichever one of those it is, that is an even times an odd, or an odd times an even. And that means that an even times an odd is an even, and therefore n times n plus 1 is an even number. 4 times an even number is a multiple of 8, because 4 times an even always makes a multiple of 8, and then you have to add uh, the one more. Okay, you might want to rewind and listen to my explanation again there. So therefore, 4n times n plus 1 is a multiple of 8, because it's 4 times an even, and therefore, this is a multiple of 8 plus 1, one more than the multiple of 8. Okay? Example 3. Prove that n plus 1 squared plus n plus 3 squared minus n plus 5 squared is the same as n plus 3 times n minus 5. This fancy uh, sign here, which is uh, the identically equal to sign, just means both sides are exactly the same as each other. 
no matter what n is. So we're going to start by simplifying the more complicated sides and hopefully get we the simpler sides out of that. So we take uh, that side and we expand the brackets like this. And when we uh, expand the brackets properly, we get n squared plus 2n, n squared plus 6n plus 9, and then the final bracket we uh, expand like that. This entire thing is being subtracted, so we have to be careful here that we subtract everything. So we're subtracting n squared minus 10n minus 25. Now we simplify. n squared plus n squared minus n squared is just n squared. 2n plus 6n minus 10n is minus 2n. And 1 plus 9 minus 25 is minus 15. We have simplified. Finally, just to make it look like n plus 3 times n minus 5, we just factorise. And when we factorise that, that is the same. And we are finished. It is what we wanted as required. It's quite nice to write as required at the end of your proofs to show that you've achieved what you wanted to do. You might want to uh, try that question yourself without looking. Example 4. The product of two consecutive positive integers is added to the larger of the two integers. Prove that the result is always a square number. Okay, so a lot of these have uh, quite wordy questions. So that first sentence, we need to uh, understand what that means step by step. The product of two consecutive positive integers. Product means multiply. And two consecutive positive integers means two numbers next to each other. So n and n plus 1 are two consecutive positive integers. We're going to multiply them because it says product and then add it to the larger of the two ones. The larger one is n plus 1. So you take a set of positive integers and we multiply them and then add the larger integer. integer. Take a moment to follow what I just did. Okay. We expand the brackets, we simplify, and then we factorise. We get n plus 1 times n plus 1, that's the same as n plus 1 squared, and that is a square number because it's a number squared. This is a square number as required, and we've finished. Okay? This is quite a tricky topic, so you might want to rewatch the video a few times so you really get an idea of the logical steps that are involved. There's some practice questions for you to try here. Prove algebraically that the sum of any three consecutive even integers is always a multiple of six. And prove algebraically that the sum of any two positive integers is always even. I'm going to give you some hints. So uh, consecutive even integers look like this. 2n, 2n plus 2, and 2n plus 4. Those are consecutive. They are next to each other. Even integers. They are all even we have missed out the odd numbers in between. Now this one, uh, the sum of any odd positive integers is always even. 2n plus 1 and 2m plus 1 is a way of writing two different positive integers and it can be any two positive integers. Okay, pause the video and try to uh, solve those yourselves. It'll probably take you at least 10 minutes to do both questions. I'll reveal the answers in... Three, two, one. Did you get it right? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching today's video from Advanced Maths. We have plenty more videos coming every week. Check out our videos from uh, the past and remember to like and subscribe for more videos. We have uh, GCSE, A level, and IB videos, and they're always quick and simple. Uh, so it's really easy to revise. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.